this video, we're going to continue solving formulas for a variable. But now we're going to see the variable appearing in two different places. To help us work with this, we're going to use what is, what you could think of as the distributive property in reverse. In other words, we'll have something like a times b plus a times c, where you might notice the same thing appears on both terms. You can almost see that that a has been distributed through parentheses onto two parts. The a was first multiplied by the b, and then it was multiplied by the c, keeping the sign with it. And so we can take that thing that's in common on both and factor it out or reverse distribute it, pull it out of the parentheses. The parentheses then are representing everything that was left behind after we pulled that a out, the b plus c. This is going to be a nice trick to use when we've got the variable in two places. We can pull it out and get it in one place. Before we can do that, though, we must put all the terms with the variable on one side. And all the other terms, anything that doesn't have the variable we want, on the other side. Once we've done that, we can factor out the variable we are looking for, and that variable will be multiplied by something in parentheses. To undo the multiplication, we divide to isolate the variable. Let's look at an example where we can see this work out. In this problem, we're solving ax plus b equals cx plus d for x, and you'll notice the x is appearing in two places. We're going to want to get them all on one side together and anything without an x on the other side. Let's move all the terms with x to the left side. ax is good, we need to get rid of cx by subtracting it from both sides. Now all the terms with x are on the left side. However, we've got this b term that does not have a variable on it. We need to get rid of the b also. So we'll subtract b from both sides as well. That way, everything on the left has an x, ax minus cx. Nothing on the right has an x. We've got d and a minus b. Now we're ready to use that distributive property in reverse by factoring out the x they both have in common. Pull out the x that they both have in common. That's what distributed through, and what's left, a minus c, is going to fill the parentheses. The other side's still the same, d minus b. So to get the x alone, we just have to divide by the a minus c on both sides, and we get x is equal to this fraction, d minus b over a minus c. Let's try another example. Here we've got the formula for the surface area of a cone, a equals pi r squared plus pi r l, where l is the slant height. We're going to solve this for pi. Notice the pi appears in two places. Fortunately, this time they're all on the right side, and anything without a pi is on the left side, so we don't have to do any moving. We're ready to factor out the pi that they have in common, and whatever's left is going to fill the parentheses, r squared plus rl, r squared plus rl, still equals a. We're solving for the pi. To get the pi alone, we just divide by that parentheses, the r squared plus rl, divide by r squared plus rl, and we end up with pi is equal to a over r squared plus rl. When the variable's appearing in two places, what we'll do is we'll get the variable all on one side, anything without the variable on the other side, factor out the variable we want, 
and then divide to isolate our variable. 